motivation is overrated. Like, don't don't get me wrong. It, no motivation is good. It's nice to have, but let's be honest. How often do we really feel motivated to create? What's going on, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Studio Time. I am your host, Jay Stu, and with me is my co-host, Justin Speck. What's going on, Justin? Not a whole lot, man. Just uh, happy to be a part of Studio Time yet again, so uh, excited. Yeah, it's, it's, it's been a while, man, with the last yeah, episode. Well, the last episode we recorded was in February. Um, at the time of this recording, it's going to come out next week. But the last time we um, we uploaded at, uh, was January, oh, wow. January 24th. So it, it's it's been a while. <laughs> been a minute. Yeah. And, and, you know, life gets in the way. Um, things happen. We have families and, and spouses and kids and jobs and responsibilities and grown up things that we would rather not be doing <laughs> right yeah indeed uh yeah um but i mean that's it's that's a that's a perfect uh segue to, to you know go ahead and get started with with uh this episode um when you know the the topic is uh creative consistently you know we we all have things that you know get in the way of uh our uh creativity and just you know trying to uh produce content you know make short films youtube videos podcasts whatever whatever it is you're doing um you know you, you got stuff that gets in the way but if you're really serious about it you can't let that stuff hinder you from doing doing what you love you just got to find a way to adjust um but that's that's easier said than done i think i, I can say that for everybody who is a, a, a creator um it's not always easy to you know make the time or even if you have the time you know when you got other responsibilities and you know you're, you're stressed out and you're thinking about all the other things that you have to do um yeah. it's hard to kind of come up with with great ideas um for for whatever you're trying to do whether you're you know a, a filmmaker or a content creator or um you know a, a musician whatever it, it's it's not it's not always easy sometimes we want to wait on motivation motivation is overrated it's <laughs> it's nice to have like don't don't get me wrong it, no motivation is good it's nice to have and it's you always want to stay motivated but Let's be honest. How often do we really feel motivated to create? Right. Like that that feeling is few and far between. It feels fantastic when when it, it it comes around, but you know, true creation it's not predicated on motivation. It's predicated on being consistent. And that's why we're right. here today. And I think, you know, talking about motivation, um there's a even though it's not creative, there's a fitness guy I follow on social media, but I think it applies. He talks about, you know, cause a lot of people struggle to be motivated to work out or to eat right and stuff. Uh -huh. including What's myself. his name? And, uh, it's, his name is, um, why am I blanking on it now? It's, uh, must not be that great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jordan Syatt. There you go. Jeez Louise. Okay. Jordan okay. Syatt is his name. <laughs> um, anyway, he talks about how, you can't wait for motivation because motivation probably will never really come. What you have to do is actually start putting in the work. And then when you start to see results and in a creative sense, like when you start to kind of make, you start producing something mm -hmm. that kind of motivates you and then you keep going. Yeah. And, and f for me, I know, you know, I, I am currently writing a novel and sometimes the last thing I want to do is sit down in front of the keyboard and actually type words even mm -hmm. though it is what I want to do. But if I do it and I sit down at the keyboard and actually produce something, that kind of sparks something in me and it, it makes me feel excited. And the next day I'm maybe a little bit more willing to sit down at the keyboard and do it. And then the next day, maybe a little bit more so. So it becomes, it's one of those things that it's it just kind of, it gets, I won't say it necessarily gets easier, but it's, it's 
the mo you have to motivate yourself. You can't wait for motivation. Yeah. You have to kind of push yourself to do it. And that kind of creates that motivation to, to keep going. Yeah. It's like, it, you're, you're kind of, you know, playing Jedi mind tricks on yourself. You got to trick right. yourself into being, being motivated that, you know, that spontaneous motivation, like I said before, it feels fantastic, but right. you can't rely on that. That's, that's, that's fleeting. That come that comes and goes as of right now. I, I, you know, I do feel that I've, I've, I've felt that way, you know, for the past couple of days, but you know, I, I know that, you know, come next week and you know, when, when the, you know, the, the, the bills are due and, and my kids are running around right. and I, I got to, you know, cook dinner, take out the trash and and then try to go to bed on time for for work. And, you know, I, I'm starting to eat healthier. So I'm meal planning. So I got all this other stuff mm -hmm. to do. And I'm thinking about all of that. And, you know, once I get done with all of that, I'm not going to feel like creating anything. The last thing I want to no. do is sit in front of a computer and write. <laughs> right. <laughs> so <clears throat> exactly. Um. You know, you know, day a little, a little bit like days like today. Like we're we're in Atlanta right now, and it and it's it's raining, um, mm -hmm. and you know, a, a lot of people, the weather kind of, of affects their mood. I'm I'm from Cleveland, um, so it's it was often cloudy in Cleveland, and it it, it just it kind of had a it affect it affected my mood, which yeah, is one of the sure, reasons yeah. why I wanted to move away from yeah. from cleveland to kind of put myself in a different environment and get myself in a in a uh better uh mindset to you know feel that motivation but what i've learned since i moved is that that don't matter <laughs> you right, know what i'm yeah. saying like you got it if if you're gonna do it you're gonna do it like right. you know if you if you wait if you're waiting on if you're waiting on motivation you may as well not even do it you know right um it's 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 kind of like what ice cube said when um he was referring to you know being an entrepreneur so when you start out you're gonna have to get used to working really hard and not seeing anything from it if you're not willing to do that you may as well not even start and the same thing right. goes for you know for any for anything creative if 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 <laughs> you're doing it if you're waiting on motivation to do it or if you you know doing it for monetary gain or recognition you may as well not even start because there are going to be times when you are grinding you know with blood sweat and tears and see nothing from it but the thing for me is i get i get fulfillment from knowing that i made something yeah knowing absolutely you know you know, we because we obviously take inspiration or or you know influence. Like there's a constant influx of information and and uh, artistic inspiration going into our brains, um, consciously and subconsciously. But the thing about it is that I I get gratification out of uh, making something new. You know, being transparent, I've been feeling a little guilty lately because you know. I'm calling myself a filmmaker and I've only made one short film. And that's, you know, that's because life has gotten in the way. I've gotten a new job sure. since making that, since making that short film. My, my wife has gotten a new job since making that short film. We've had tremendous car trouble over the last couple, couple of months. Uh, so it, it, there are things that are, that are constantly happening hurdles that we constantly have to jump over. And one of the things that, um, helps me get over those hurdles and and probably the biggest thing that um i i could say right now is changing your mindset and you're not going to be able to create let alone consistently create if you don't have mental clarity i made a, a video about it on my on my youtube channel i'll put that in the link so you guys can check it out it, I was just talking talking about the the key to you know creating consistently, and what it, what helped me was changing changing the way I thought, and change which in turn changed the way I I did things. Um, I had to aggressively go after mental clarity because your responsibilities are not going to stop. 
my kids are not right. going to be quiet just because I want them to be quiet. They might, you know what I'm <laughs> right. saying? They might be quiet for, for a little bit, but they kids, they forget. They just want to play. My wife is, you know, not going to stop, you know, talking to me about the, you know, the bills and the stuff around the house because it needs to be talked about. Stuff has to get done. Yeah. So I had to take it upon myself to start a routine, kind of, you know, force myself to get in the habit of writing every day. And I'm still struggling with that. I write in my journal most days um and, but i do write every day even if it's not in my journal uh youtube videos or uh working working on a short film script even though i haven't made any short films uh since the the last one i've written maybe about seven eight scripts since then uh on on short yeah. films and and that and that that's the thing you you gotta you gotta realize just is that or the thing that I had to realize was that, you know, I I had to change the way I thought because it was going to change the way I do. And once you realize that, it gets a little bit easier. For me, mm -hmm. as far as my routine, um, I get up really early in the morning. I get up at like a quarter to four. And I, I didn't wow. always do that because I'm not a morning person. I hate getting up in the morning. Uh, but the job that I have now, I have to get up uh, really early. Like I said, I'm not a morning person, but once I get going, I, f I like the way I feel in the morning. You know, um, I like. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I like knowing that, you know, I have that quiet time uh, before everybody gets up. I can do my breathing exercises. I can meditate. I can pray. Um, I can, you know, write in my journal or, you know, uh, jot down some some ideas um in, a, in another notebook uh, but we'll we'll get to that later um but yeah just gaining mental clarity and using that quiet time for input and reflection one thing that i've been studying this past year is stoicism and stoicism has helped me tremendously as far as my creativity a lot of people have a uh this idea of stoicism that is that that you know those kind of people are mean or boring or, you know, just very me melancholy. And that's not necessarily true. Uh, what it has taught me is temperance, just being, you know, being even killed and having indifference. And that has helped me tremendously with my creativity because it teaches me to relax and not to worry about certain things. And especially for myself, as far as having grace with myself and not beating myself up for you know not being as uh consistent as i would like right. but you know being as consistent as i'm able to yeah i think you and i are very in similar boats you know you i so for me i don't get i haven't been getting up early i did do that january through march back when i had to get up early for my job mm -hmm. and so i just got up even earlier I did the journaling. I was um, being doing like a grateful journal kind of thing, writing down what I was grateful for. Me too. And it just puts you in a in a good mindset for the day. Mm -hmm. um, and I haven't been doing that lately, and I really probably need to get back into that. And part of the reason I haven't been doing that is because, you know, it feels like I have very little free time. Uh, mm -hmm. And so after my son goes to sleep like that, that's when I can finally watch the TV show that I've been wanting to watch or whatever. And I end up staying up too late. And so then I don't want to get up at five <laughs> in the morning or whatever. And so this happens every now and again and every, and you know, every so often you just kind of have to remind yourself like what's important to me is watching the TV show more important than being creative and put doing that creative output. And the answer uh -huh. is always no. You know, yes, I do want to watch the show. I'm entertained by it. And it does kind of sometimes it can inspire me to, you know, come up with a new idea or write something. But right. overall, it's that's, you know, I'm not I'm not going to look back in 10 years or 20 years and go, man, I'm really glad I watched that TV show, <laughs> you know, <laughs> rather than right. working on my book or whatever, you know, so like, uh, man, that that episode so, of ER was was fantastic. Like I <laughs> right. really changed my life. It has stayed with me. <laughs> Um, so, I mean, there'll be time for that. So, you know, I think mm -hmm. it is true. It's important to, to prioritize. Um, Absolutely. and like you said, if you're not, if you're not really, really willing to put in the work, then it doesn't really mean that much to you, I think. And so, um, and I often beat myself up over not writing consistently, but 
Mm-hmm. I also know, and you know, you were you, you you going back a little further to what you said. You were kind of almost. I don't remember if you said you felt guilty, but calling yourself yeah. a filmmaker, even though you've only made the one short film, uh-huh. I still kind of struggle with calling myself a writer. I uh-huh. have written um, three novels, but I've never published anything. I haven't put anything online. I also haven't really edited them. I haven't really quite learned how to the editing process yet. So I'm still learning as I go. Mm-hmm. But I think. You know, I do consider myself a writer, and I think part of the thing that makes it so evident to me that I'm a writer is that, yes, I may not have written for a few days, but I am Mm -hmm. always thinking about the story that I'm writing and different, like how to make it better. And absolutely things I needed to to kind of like the next scene I need to work on and stuff like that. Like it's always in my mind. Um, And I feel, you know, and, and I do feel guilty when I don't sit down and write. So I think that's another thing that kind of kind of makes you a writer essentially is that type Mm -hmm. of stuff it is very difficult to be consistent but it's it's if you can establish like a routine and that's something i've been struggling with lately too is um a lot of i've i've read a lot of writing books and a lot of books talk about uh trying to to choose one time of the day every day and that's going to be your writing time Mm -hmm. and for me that's really difficult because i don't know my days kind of are different and so I don't Mm -hmm. know when that one time could be. And I talked to my wife about it and I said, should I get up early? Should it be early in the morning or should it be after Oliver goes to sleep? Mm -hmm. And she's like, you should do it at night. But I, it hasn't been working because Oliver sometimes will fall asleep very quickly. And other times he will take a long time to fall asleep. And like you said, Mm -hmm. at the end of the day, after you've done work and after you've had to bathe your kid and get him ready for bed and finally he's in bed and you've brushed his teeth and all that you're kind of you just want to chill and you don't yeah. Really, yeah you don't really want to go do more work so right. it hasn't really worked for me doing it at night and and sometimes i'm just tired sometimes once he finally mm-hmm. falls asleep i just want to go to bed so mm-hmm. um it's i i think i think it would be better if i got up earlier and and maybe journaled did my writing then got ready for work if i could do that every day I think maybe that would be a little bit better. So that might be something I, I personally will try to maybe work on. Just, just to piggyback on what you said, like the compartmentalization of your time is essential, especially yeah. if you want to like do this full time, which I'm trying to do. Um, yeah. Cause I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to do my nine to five forever. I don't want to be at no. a nine to five at all. I'm, I'm not a nine to five person. I do it because right. I have to do it, but right. it, you know, if it, it, you know, if if I had had a dream job right now, I'd be on I'd be somewhere on a movie set behind the camera. Yeah, you got to make it happen. In order to get to full time, you got to kind of treat it like it's full time, even even when you're doing it part time. If that makes any sense. Mm-hmm. So, if you only have maybe ten minutes out of the day to write, then use that ten minutes to write once you know once you get used to that and you can see little windows of time throughout the other day shift those little windows of time to that 10 minutes and now you have 15 minutes to write um and you know once you get in a routine and you kind of see how you can perform your daily tasks more efficiently then you can uh make more time to write and then that that 10 15 minutes could turn into an hour and now you know in that how much how much writing can you get done in an hour you can write if you write right. a script yeah. you can write five pages in an hour you know depending you know, depending on yeah, yeah. you know your your creative flow at that point because sometimes it takes me an hour to write one page but <laughs> right, if i'm yeah. if i'm really feeling it yeah, yeah yeah it just depends on the day but you know you've now that you've gotten into that routine and you've learned how to compartmentalize your time um, you kind of squeeze that free time into one little section at the beginning of the day or the end of the day or what have you. Um, now you can uh, you you know what works and how to get the best out of your uh, your 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 time, how to get the best out of your yeah. your creativity Small um, availability. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. The the availability, the availability. Uh, another thing that that really helps me, you know, is you know keeping a journal. And I have three journals. I have my, I have my gratitude journal. My like, I get, I, I guess you call it a regular journal, but it's 
it's it's more it's specifically for like the stoic mindset and trying to practice those virtues and uh just keeping tabs on myself and writing writing on that throughout the day so i have the the gratitude journal the journal that i write 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 in throughout the day and then i have my creative journal uh which also i write in throughout the day and it that really helps me compartmentalize my thoughts because you know this is the stuff that i want to work on internally with my with my stoicism journal and then this is the stuff stuff i want to work on externally with my creative journal and then i just have my gratitude journal that i walk that i write in at the beginning of the day just to set the tone for the day um and put myself in a yeah. in a in a good mood for the day um but i i think it's really important for creators uh content creators filmmakers songwriters uh whatever to have both to have both versions of a journal have a regular journal and a creative journal yeah um and it, it has worked out for me because i like i said i've i've churned out i think seven or eight short film scripts yeah. because which is awesome i've um yeah, thank you because because i i have that creative journal and the good thing about journals is that you're the only one that's gonna read it so it's right exactly it's restriction free a, a just a judgment free zone it it really helps me to i my my, my mind is always going the gears are always turning so it mm -hmm. helps me to put stuff down on paper and rationalize it because one i have adhd so i'm gonna forget things <laughs> right, if sure. i don't write them down and two writing it down helps me to flesh it out i can reflect on it and revise it later if i see it on paper i'm not going to be able to do that if it's stuck up here and three writing it down is the first step to making it happen you know stephen king once said that right writing things down is a is like like a good way to ensure a bad idea and i agree with that to an extent but he's, he's kind of an exception king. to yeah he's yeah, Steve, exactly. right he's like he's, he's one he's one of he's one of if not the greatest american writer right ever he, uh and yeah like I, it, it, and not saying that not saying that he doesn't work hard but he has a no, natural gift for fantastic ideas like what yes. he has you can't teach you can right. teach it to an extent but as far as like stephen king or or quentin tarantino like you either have it or you don't right but for the I, rest of us talks, we got to work hard at, at 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 getting there and writing stuff down yeah exactly yeah i mean he was the, to expand on that quote he he basically doesn't write his ideas down mm -hmm. if it's a bad idea it goes away if it's a good idea it stays with him and that just doesn't work for some of us <laughs> like <Right>. i've had <laughs> great ideas that i never wrote down and are gone you know and so yeah <laughs> um I got to write ideas down. Otherwise they'll disappear. So um, he's, mm -hmm. he's definitely an exception to the rule. I know, but there, you know, one of my other favorite authors, Brandon Sanderson, he writes everything down and he will admit mm -hmm. if it's a bad idea. And he, on his podcast will bring up bad writing ideas and they'll kind mm -hmm. of play with around with it and turn it into something funny or something. But he writes everything yeah. down because I think he's like us. If he doesn't write it down, he'll forget it. And so, right. yeah, it's, I definitely am a big proponent of writing everything down. Yeah, for sure. And and even if let's say you write something that sucks, keep it around so you know not to do it again. You 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 can learn <laughs> right. from your mistakes. You know what I mean? So you know, I, I'm a, yeah. And sometimes I'm a, a bad idea can writing things out snowball into a good idea. You know, so yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, yeah, like I said, I'm a I'm a I'm a big fan of uh, writing things down. Also, something that that has that I haven't done often, especially since I've moved to, uh, to Georgia. Um, but explore new experiences. Um, it, it's really, it's really helpful to put your, your physical self into a new environment, which is like yeah. I said, which is why I moved from Cleveland to Atlanta. 
Um, but it really helps to do things that you haven't done before. Um, one, so you can get, you know, get a new ex new experience, and two, so you can see things from other people's perspective. Um, I'm an introvert, so that's kind of difficult for me because I'm not a people person. Right. But you know, in that, if you can just get over that initial hump and just you know, uh, in initiate that that new experience, it will be it 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 it'll be gratifying. Even if you don't you don't really care for the experience, what you learn from that experience can fuel so many stories and so many songs yeah. and and movie ideas. Um. You know the 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 old writing proverb says, "Write what you know," and you know it, it. The more you experience, the more you know, and the more you know, the more you can write. Right, um, yeah. for me, the hardest part of writing is the research stage, because I I always feel like I don't know enough about my concept. I'm all, and, and it could just be me overthinking, but I, I often see a lot of my peers talking about plot holes in movies. And I know that sometimes you you, you can't uh, avoid them, but that's something right. that hinders me from, from finishing things. Um, and, you know, that's, uh, that's just something, you know, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to get over it, but, uh, yeah new experiences helps with that new experiences help you learn and help you research and help you know not only what to write but how to write it in an accurate and empathetic way and how to how to right. create something that is going to resonate with joe schmo down the street or um flow schmo up the up the street you know <laughs> so getting out and doing something you've never done before so you can have an idea that you've never had before is important yeah yeah i agree um research is always is hard for me as well um you know they talk about like if there's a profession that you're just not as familiar with to interview people and mm -hmm. also being an introvert like that just kind of scares me um, even though the yeah. worst <laughs> thing that they'll say you know you could call somebody up and say hey i'm a writer and i'm writing this story or script about you know a police officer could i you know talk to you about what it's like being a police officer and the worst thing they'll say is no no and you go, all right <laughs> <laughs> but for whatever reason it's like terrifying to think about yeah. going up to somebody and part of that i think is just going up to somebody and telling them i'm a writer and i'm writing something mm -hmm. you know it's like that that is kind of the scary part or something i don't know but but yeah, that, that's something I struggle with, too, because there's I've had ideas for things where but I'm, you know, like, well, I don't really know anything about that. So doing d doing new things, talking to new people, it's it's all fuel for the creative fire. So it's it's definitely yeah. good to get out of your comfort zone um, and and try new things and talk to new people. Yeah, for sure. You know, and uh, another thing that kind of goes with new experiences is, you know, uh, consuming diverse content. Um, one thing that I love doing that I started doing maybe four or five years ago, uh, was listening to podcasts and podcasts, <laughs> like, because we know we doing one right now. Podcasts oh, have, sure. have, have changed my life, but you gotta, you gotta filter out the BS because <laughs> because it's a lot of people it's a lot of people talking crazy on on the internet right now like pod like podcasting is so popular you know my son could go get a mic and start a podcast yeah and like people like people be talking crazy on this internet so you gotta you know when it come to podcasts you know everybody shouldn't have one and you gotta you know chew you know chew the meat spit out the bones um right. podcasting has has tremendously tremendously um changed my perspective and expand my knowledge on a lot of things especially yeah. myself i've learned so much about myself listening to uh, uh, michael rosenbaum uh mm -hmm. inside of you like that's that is one of if not my favorite podcast um because 
he really you know he really gets gets inside of people and not everybody is always um is always wide open but the but the best episodes are the ones where people are really really wide open zach zachary levi has some fantastic episodes uh frank grillo had one that where, where he was he was an open book and it, it almost brought me to tears um but you know just consuming different things and through different mediums watching movies that you wouldn't normally watch um for example i started watching westerns right. a, a couple years ago westerns are fantastic <laughs> but i i would have never known right. that if, if i didn't yeah. just you know take you know just take the chance and just try that new experience um mm -hmm. you know read read a genre of a book that you've never you know read before if you if you're reading you know young adult uh novels try reading true crime you might like that um yeah. if you're reading true crime try reading try reading a biography you might you might find something interesting about that person's life um you know li listen to a, a genre of music you've never listened to before uh you know 10 years ago i wasn't listening to film scores i mean I, I had the one i was listening to you know man of steel but right. you know other than that i wasn't really listening to a whole bunch of film scores now film scores are, are almost all i listen to <laughs> um, I, mean, I still listen to you know uh rock and r b and and hip-hop but like primarily it's film scores yeah um because Same i here. find that i find i find film scores and hip-hop the most create the most uh influential as far as mm -hmm. far as my my creativity um so yeah just just try different things and try to consume content and consume information in different ways but just be careful with what you are <clears throat> with what you're consuming because like i said not everything is a value and there's a lot of invaluable information out here in this world on this internet so you know just be careful with what you what you're taking in yeah there's a um i i agree i think if, if you want to be a screenwriter watching movies is very important if you want to be a novelist reading books is really important um mm -hmm. there's a screenwriter named brian koppelman he uh he co-wrote like oceans 13 um mm -hmm. a couple, he's done he's oh he's co uh, creator of that TV show Billions on Showtime. Anyway, mm -hmm. he had a uh, back when Vine was a thing. He used to do these little like 15 second, you know, screenwriting tips. And one of the I remember one of them was he was feeling a little guilty because he was spending the day at home watching movies. But then he had to remind mm -hmm. himself that input is, you know, maybe I don't know if it's just as important, but it's it's important. Input is as important as output, you know, so it's yeah, absolutely. It's, you, you can't you can't be a screenwriter if you don't watch movies like you just it's just not going to work and yeah. same thing with you know you can't be a screenwriter if you don't read scripts you got to read scripts right yeah <laughs> so um and same thing with being a novelist you know you're not going to really be a novelist if you don't read books and things like that right. so yeah input is very important uh but like you said you got to just kind of be mindful of what you're inputting <laughs> right because what you what you ingest it will lead to what you produce in input equals output it's not the other way around so you gotta you know you gotta <laughs> right. be, you know, right. got be careful of what of what you put you know putting putting into your mind and you know and like i said chew the meat spit out the bones study it you know if if you whatever you want to do try to become a master at it you know i i i, I take pride in yeah my my youtube channel um a few of you may know that i um i started my youtube channel over from scratch a couple of weeks ago um and i haven't gotten many views as of yet but you know it, it's still it's still a, a a baby channel um the reason i started it over you know not to get too off subject but i started it over because i had rebranded my old channel and it was recommending my content to the people 
who were viewers of my my old content and not right. the content that I that I was producing now. So my engagement yeah. rates were were very low. So I was like, maybe if I just start over, re-upload the content to the and and try and get it in front of the eyes of the correct audience, maybe I'll see some more success. Um, and like I said, I, I, I'm not getting many views right now because I, it's only been a couple weeks, but just sticking with it and, and, you know, um, mastering the craft and, 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 and studying like my YouTube videos from three years ago were not great. They were too long. They were, they were poorly edited. I was very serious about it. So the more I, the more I did it, the more I learned, the more I could be, if uh, the more I could create more efficiently, higher quality, um, and now here I am, you know, with a with a podcast. You know, even though we took you know seven months off, we we still here. So <laughs> <laughs> um, that's right. But you know, this, the thing is, you know, not beating yourself up for not being, not being where you want to be, but just being grateful that you have come so far and not and you know not where you used to be so just study your craft um erica badu recently said on instagram like just learn what comes easiest to you first and then go from there don't try to do the hard thing first do the easy thing first that's why it's easy you you do do that first right master the fundamentals master what you what you already know if you're into if you're intermediate at one thing become a master at it become proficient at it and then move on to the next thing um and that's you know that's that's what it's all about just trying to take baby steps not beat yourself up and keep going yeah before we get into the the before we get into draft time i do have uh one more thing i want to say about creative consistency and that is be gracious with yourself and being gracious with yourself means taking breaks and resting it is okay to rest you don't have to grind super hard every single day take right. some time to yourself compartmentalize some time to not only create but to come down and right you know breathe and be calm and relax and and I'm not even talking about you know take a time to to like watch a movie to study it like sometimes just watch a movie just to watch it watch it because you enjoy it you know go eat your favorite food <laughs> yeah read your favorite book listen to your favorite song go for a walk going like I've been going on walks almost every day now it is the one of the best decisions I've ever made humans naturally lack energy outside energy vitamin d that's where you get that from mm -hmm. we naturally lack that yeah and walking outside just gives you that because vitamin d comes from the sun and i always heard teachers say that you know you need to be outside you need you need to be in the sun and you hear that but you you know you're not really listening it's not really sticking with you um at least for me and then you know, I started going out for walks and started working out outside and, you know, started shooting around outside, you know, uh, working on my shot. And it has made me feel so much better just from uh, just a, a human being standpoint, not even being a creator, just just being a regular right, yeah. person, just being a regular guy, just getting outside and being present in the moment outside that has made me feel tremendously better and yeah definitely helps my mental clarity because i can i can use that time to not only reflect but to just be and not think about anything just think about the you know little walking trail that i'm walking on and it that i i cannot stress enough how much um how important it is to to clear your mind and get the proper rest and you know sleep 
make sure you're sleeping enough. Um, I, I have been notorious for not sleeping enough. And what has helped me is getting up earlier because, you know, when I get up earlier, I get sleepy earlier. (laughs) Um, (laughs) so it, I've, I've been, you know, going to bed on time, trying to go to bed around, you know, uh, 10, 10, 30, you know, go to sleep around 10, 10, 30. I start, I start winding down at about eight o'clock so I can be asleep by like 10 30 um and i get up at a quarter to four because i only need about five and a half to six hours of sleep but i wasn't even getting that i was getting like four hours of sleep and that yeah yeah. people underestimate the power of rest rest is so important for both your physical and your your mental mind you're never going to be you're never going to be creatively consistent if you're not consistently resting it's just just never going to happen it's uh it reminds me of again i the fitness guy i follow talks about you know it's sleep is just as important as like working out in the gym Uh because that's when your sleep is when the muscles kind of uh heal themselves and grow and so if you're Uh not getting the proper sleep you're never going to be able to put on the muscle that you're trying to put on and stuff like that. So it's kind of the same thing. Uh-huh. It's like if you're consistently sleep deprived, your brain's just not going to function the same way and you're not right. going to be as creative as you want to be. It's uh-huh. just consistently all around better to get better sleep, more sleep. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, just a final thought, you know, like, like, like we said before, um, have grace with yourself. Don't, don't beat yourself up. It's important to work through the lack of motivation because the lack of motivation will be more abundant than the actual motivation. That's just the the harsh reality that yeah. that you that you know we as creatives um, are going to face on a on a daily basis. Um, but you got to do it for the love of doing it. You know, you know, just, I I love. I love watching movies. I don't always want to watch a movie though. I love, you know, listening to music, but sometimes right. I ride home in silence. You're not always going to want to do what you love to do, but if you love to do it, right. then you'll do it anyway. Even though there are going to be days when you are physically unable to do something. You 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 know, you're going to hurt your hand. You're not going to be able to you're not going to be able to play the guitar that day. You know, your TV might break. You're not going to be able to to watch a movie that day. Um, your computer, God forbid, you know, your computer might get a virus or something. And, you know, you're not going to be able to to work, you know, revise the script that day. Um, don't beat yeah. yourself up. Try to find something else that will uh, nurture your creativity that that's the thing that you got to realize you got to nurture your creativity it's just like a baby if you got to nurture it in order in order for it to grow so um just continue to do that and you know you'll be all right you'll be all right um but without any further delay we're gonna go ahead and get into uh draft time and today's topic will be Build your own sci-fi film. Um, we just came up with this about five minutes before we started recording. <laughs> so this is going to be interesting. But I, I got a pretty good idea where I'm going to go with this. So, yeah. For those of you that don't know the rules, I'm pretty sure most of most of our listeners know. But for those of you that don't know the rules, uh, usually if we have a guest, the guest will go first, followed by uh, Justin and I. Uh, once a pick has been selected, uh, it can't be selected again. Uh, there are five rounds. I don't know who went first last time, so I'm just going to let Justin go first this time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we're going right. to do uh, director, writer, lead actor, supporting actor, composer. Again, that's director, writer, lead, support, composer. Mr. Speck, you're on the clock. Yeah. Yes, um, you would probably be upset with me for going first because I'm going to probably steal your director. Oh, absolutely. Um, I know for a fact <laughs> that you're going to steal my director. Um, yes. but it's, but it's uh, all so right. I have to go, 
I'm going to go with Denis Villeneuve. Yep. From, yep. Uh, you know, he did Dune, Blade Runner 2049. He's he's good. So got to go with I him. I didn't see that coming. Yep. Uh, yep. I felt a little bad about it, but not that bad. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm going to go with Christopher Nolan. If you if you got Denny Villeneuve, I mean D- Denny Villeneuve is like a master at world building. I've said that several times before on Cinema yeah. Heroes podcast, so I, it's no surprise that you would pick him. He's perfect for a science a, a science fiction flick. But Christopher Nolan is a master at plot, and <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna choose Christopher Nolan, and he he, he makes a a, a great. Uh, his his movies are always going to be uh, a sight to see. It, yeah, they're they're sure. always uh, a cinematic accomplishment. He's he's always trying to do something that he hasn't done before, and it's it's wonderful to see. All right, Alrighty, for writer, writer. This might be a little bit of a cheat because he's more known for n- novels, mm-hmm. but he is a screenwriter. He has written films. He's also since passed away, but. Uh, I'm going to go with Michael Crichton. Michael Crichton wrote one of the greatest science fiction novels of all time, which was turned into one of the greatest movies of all time, Jurassic Park. Also, uh, that's right. I mean, he created he wrote ER. a lot of good science fiction novels. Congo. Yeah. Yeah. He, Congo. he did create ER. That's right. Um, yeah. He wrote the film, co wrote the film Twister. Uh, he also wrote the movie in the the book Sphere, which is an excellent sci-fi novel. Um, mm-hmm. Timeline, uh, Congo, like I said. So yeah, he's he's just an excellent uh, sci-fi writer. Eric Roth. I'm choosing Eric Roth. Eric, Roth. For my writer. Excellent choice. Excellent writer. Since you got Denny Villeneuve, I got I gotta get I gotta get Eric Roth. Yeah, yeah. I don't blame you. He's gonna write a rich, dense story. Is definitely gonna is gonna help the science fiction drama. Yes. Um, you know, we we we've talked about Doom before, and I think part of that world building, part of that excellent world building credit goes to Eric Roth. I mean, obviously, Dune is just a, a very dense story in itself, but you know, trying to adapt such uh such a behemoth of a world with doom to the screen is not an easy task and eric roth uh he definitely he definitely did that so i'm I'm gonna go with eric roth excellent choice excellent choice so lead actor lead actor for me yep um i'm trying to think outside the box a bit and so Mm -hmm. i am gonna go with david desmalchian um, who is, I think, a really good actor. Um, he, you know him. He, yeah, he was in Dune. He was in the Suicide Squad. He was in the Guardian. Uh, no, not the Guardians. Ant Man movies, except for actually, he wasn't the third one. He was just the voice of somebody. Um, but I think he's an excellent actor, and I think he would be great in a. You know, I mean, he was great in Dune, but he'd be great as a lead. I think in a sci-fi film. I feel like I've picked this person in a previous draft, but. Maybe not. I'm gonna pick him again. Um, I'm gonna go with Andrew Garfield. Nice. I am a big Andrew Garfield fan. I think he's one of the best actors of of today. Um, so yeah, Andrew Garfield for my lead. He 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 gives a lot of emotion in his his performances. Like his it's it if. Authentic is not the right word. It is authentic, but uh, Andrew Garfield gives it gives it his all in every movie that he's in, and it you can see that on screen. Yeah. Um, like the Spider, the, the Amazing Spider Man movies. He didn't have the greatest time making those movies, but he gave it everything he had. And playing Spider Man, and he he is my favorite Spider Man. Um, you know, there there are countless other movies I could you know d- just gush about, but 
um those in particular even though he went he didn't have a great time he he gave it everything so i, I you got to respect that so i'm gonna go with with andrew garfield and also I, I would love to see andrew garfield collaborate with christopher nolan i think that's that's past due <laughs> yeah that would be yeah that would be amazing that'd be awesome yeah so now on to supporting supporting actor um i'm trying to think of an actress that i would like to see with david desmalchian and i I'm not sure um, who I think would be good in a sci-fi film. Uh, you know, I'm going to go with um, just because her name has kind of popped into my head. <laughs> uh, Rachel McAdams. Um, I don't think I've ever seen her in a sci-fi film before. So I think it would just other than maybe Doctor Strange kind of. But I think it would be interesting to see her in like a in like a full on sci-fi film like Dune or or Blade Runner or something like that. I think it would be kind of an interesting. I think she would be interesting to watch in something like that. That's a good choice. That's a good choice. I'm going back and forth between two actresses, but I think I'm going to go with my second choice, which is Emily Blunt. Good choice. Emily Blunt. To me, Emily Blunt got Lois Lane energy, and I, 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 I hope you know what that means, but she, she, she got a... It's like she she got a little bit of fire in her. <laughs> not not too much to make her like right, right. unlikable uh, uh or you know obnoxious, but just enough to give a, a little bit of that intimidation factor. So yeah, she definitely got she got that lowest lane energy, which I would like I would definitely like to have. So composer um yep. let's see i mean obviously the my go-to would be han zimmer but i'm trying to think a little differently here so yeah <laughs> i think we should take han zimmer and michael giacchino off the table <laughs> <laughs> like off the list yeah exactly off the table yeah um let's see here i'm trying to think um i, I think i've i think i have used this composer before but he has been somebody that i has been consistently good lately and that is Lauren Balf. He has done the last yeah. two Mission Impossible movies. He did the music for Black Widow, which I think was really good. Um, it he, was. I think, would be would just do a fantastic job and, and create a score that would, you know, be amazing. So that's my choice. Lauren Balf. Atticus and Leopold Ross for my composers. Okay. Nice. They did the theme for Book of Eli. They did the, the score for, for the Book of Eli, but what, what stood out to me was the main theme. It perfectly set the tone for the movie. It was it was cool, like it's like it was it was pleasing to the ear, but it was also like very like melancholic and kind of sad. So uh yeah, I I definitely I definitely want to have have those those guys for for my score because I, I want I want the ideas for the movie to have a dystopian feel a dystopic feel I, I don't think Christopher Nolan has done that yet um with his movies he he has yet to make a, a dystopic sci-fi film and I feel like that would be a new kind of area for him to 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 dive in because his his movies are very he's very much in the quantum mechanics and while i do enjoy those movies i kind of want to see him go into a more western style type movie and you know atticus ross leopold ross they, they they'd be perfect for that and there you have it ladies and gentlemen draft time justin has dennyville Nuve. Michael Crichton, David Dasmaltian, Rachel McAdams, and Lauren Balf. And I have Christopher Nolan, Eric Roth, Andrew Garfield, Emily Blunt, and Atticus and Leopold Ross. Uh, feel free to let us know in the comments or your reviews how you think we did. Um, but uh, just to go back to our... Um, our main topic of creative consistency. Remember, stay the course, try new things, 
and have grace with yourself. But that about wraps it up for this episode of Studio Time. Uh, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel at uh, Studio Me Media Filmmaking. The link is in the bio. Also, go check out Cinema Heroes uh, podcast. The link will that link will be in the bio as well. You'll you can hear and see uh, the two of us again talking about superheroes, movies, and superhero movies. But uh, once again, thank you for joining us. Uh, in the meantime, we're gonna go try to be creatively consistent. So, have a good one.